All right, number seven. Oof, this one was a, a very straightforward question as well, but let's have a look because sometimes it can be tricky. So they give us an equation which is 20x squared equals 4kx minus 13kx squared plus 2, where k is a constant and has no real roots. Okay, this bit here has no real roots. That basically implies this statement here b squared minus 4ac less than 0. When something has no real roots, we're talking about a quadratic equation, the, the inside the square root bit. When you, when you use a quadratic formula, remember how we always get plus minus, minus b plus minus the square root function over 2a? We're talking about this bit here. When this term is less than 0, you get a negative solution. And a negative of a square root is, is literally results in a math error. So that obviously can't do. So that's what it means. This means we'll get no solution. This will mess up the solution. So when this is less than zero, this means no real roots. So that's all you have to take from here, this bit here. If you had, if it said it had two real roots, then the sign would be greater, because then you have a plus minus solution. If it says it has one root, it means that these two are equal to each other. So this bit cancels out and you're left with one solution, minus b over 2a. So that's all it really means. So one solution is an equal zero, two solutions is greater than zero, and no solutions is less than zero. Okay, that's all it is. Now, let's solve the problem. So show that k satisfies this inequality. Okay, so to, so to use b squared minus 4ac, we need to realize that the, the, we need to firstly rewrite this into a quadratic expression. So what I did, I threw all of this to the left-hand side and collected like terms. So we have, for example, 20x squared plus 13k squared. So I factorized x squared and realized that we had 13k plus 20. So this would be our a term. 13k plus 20 is a. Minusing b across 4k plus 4kx, you get minus 4kx. And then throw, minus, throw 2 across and you get minus 2. So you've got b and c done. Now, replacing this into the b squared minus 4ac to, to prove this equation. Replacing b with uh, minus 4k squared. Replacing a with 13k plus 20 and c with minus 2. You literally just solve this now. Or, or simplify it. So one quick way to do it is that, especially this a and c bit, when you've got minus 4 times these two terms, I always do minus 4 times the easier term, like minus 2, because this will give us a plus 8. And then you can finally expand this bracket. And why? And the really, reason why is because if you times this one first, and then this one, you're gonna get, you could risk getting a, a wrong answer. It's very likely. It's better you do the easier ones first. Okay, just little math tips. But yeah, expanding all of this one is easy. And from this step to here, I just divided by 8 because I realized that 16, 8 are both 8 times table. Dividing by 8, you get 1 and 2. And then expanding this one, you get the same result. And because the solution tells us it's 13k plus 20, so we know that this bit was fine. So we could just divide by 8. And that's it. Done. Now, for part B, it says find the set of possible values for k. So this means just literally factorize this expression here. I've already done it, but to, to pretty much know how to get this using fa by factorizing, let's pretend you didn't know it was 5 and 4 for a second, yeah? Just so we can understand it. The key idea is to always realize that we need two numbers that multiply to make 20. So the two pairs could be, for example, 1 and 20, um, 2 and 10, or 4 and 5. Now, when you've got 2k and k, because remember it's 2k squared, so it's going to be 2k times k. When you have a constant of like a, an, an a term which isn't 1, so you've got 2, we basically need to multiply one of these figures by 2 and then and add them up to get a sum of 13. So what I'm trying to say is that, for example, if I did 1 times 2 plus 20, I'll get 22. So this is clearly wrong, so we can't use this. If I had, for example, times 2 by 2, so 2 times 2 is 4 plus 10, we get 14. So it's close but wrong. Or if I times 2 by 10, I get 20, so 22 is still wrong. But if I use the last solution, if I times 4 by 2, I get 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. And yes, that gives us a result. So we need to do 2 times 4 and 5. So 2 times plus 4 is 8. Plus 5 is 13. And voila, that's that's how I personally do it. You guys might have another way, but for me, this way is easy. Because you just list all your options and then just see which one to multiply will give us the right sum. Easy, really. Okay, that's done. Oh yeah, critical point. So now just make this equal to 0 and you realize 2k equals minus 5. Divide by 2 is minus 5 over 2 and same for this one. k is minus 4. Now when you do this one and we need to find all solutions set possible values for k, you could use the graph method or you could use this number line method. 
with a number line method I just put between the number line so between minus 4 and minus 5 over 2 I, and I just place k values between it and see which is true and false true statements mean this is where the answer lies and false statement means it's, 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 it's completely wrong so we don't we don't care about it so what I did for the left side I just chose the number for k which is less than minus 4 I chose minus 5 so when I plugged in minus 5 into this first equation here I realized that I got 2 times minus 5 plus 5, which is minus 5. And then minus 5 plus 4 is um, uh, God is minus 1. And the times in this, I got plus 5. And you can see that 5 is not less than 0. So this statement is wrong. What this means is that any value is less than 4 is false. So k is definitely not less than 4. And I did it for the right side. I put a value bigger than minus 5 or 2, so I chose 0. So plug in 0 into this equation, you get 0 plus 5 and 0 plus 4, which is 20. And that's obviously not less than zero, so that's also false. So this statement is wrong. And then when you put a value between minus four, minus five over two, I chose minus three, and then plug in minus three here, and I got minus one. And yes, minus one is less than zero. So this means this section is true. So this means k must be okay between minus four and five over two. And that's it. Done.